Alright guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another week of NFL football picks. It is Ohio Game Talks. Your boy just back at it. Gonna make another uh, just picks video. And honestly, I only got one wrong last week. I mean, I, I it was Ravens-Eagles. And that too, I was like, you know, I was going kind of back and forth. So very close to having a perfect week. But I'm gonna get uh, into this week. And um... You know, I'll just tell you, you know, go through each game, tell you how I feel, and uh, why. I, I'll be honest with you, <laughs> I wanted to record this yesterday, but I was just in no mood. You know, the Bengals being, just losing was just, kind of my mood was up. But now the Cavs won, and you know, Buckeyes, I just saw the projected playoffs. But I'm like, okay, hey, I'm in a better mood, I'll just get these picks out, why not, man? So, anyway, I'll take you through each matchup, and we'll just go from there, man. But you guys, enjoy the show. All right, let's start off with Thursday Night Football, man. We got the Green Bay Packers at the Detroit Lions, an NFC North matchup between the two of the three top teams, obviously. Uh, but let's look at the Lions, man. They are coming off a big Thanksgiving win against the Chicago Bears. Uh, they, 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 they were off to a good start, but unfortunately, I mean, nah, I guess not unfortunately since they won, but the Bears came rolling back. Um, it was 23-20, I believe, and then Caleb Williams had an opportunity for a deep pass, and that was just the worst call I've ever seen. And then that's obviously what, you know, that's what caused uh, the Bears to fire their head coach. So then we look at the Packers. I mean, they've been good, too. I mean, they beat the Dolphins. They look like a very good team. <laughs> so this is kind of a ga game. It kind of could be a franchise type of game. Like, obviously, historically, if you look, like, if these two teams were somehow in this position, you'd think the Packers win just because the— you know, the big brother effect, it's like, that's what I noticed, when the little brother's off in the head, you know, the big brother wins and they catch up, they may not overtake them in the standings, but they get the last laugh, so, you know, this could be a franchise changing game, not to be dramatic for the Lions, but the Lions have showed they can win in so many different ways, and the Packers, they have, uh, they've, they've been very good, but, you know, they've struggled a little bit with, um, I don't want to say quarterback play, but it's like, they're, they can, the offense can be a little inconsistent at times, but honestly, these two teams are going to possibly see each other again. I could definitely see that happening because I got both these teams going pretty far. Um, but for this one, guys, you know, the Lions, they've, they, they've just showed too much for me. Uh, it's nothing against the Packers. I know, you know, they definitely can win this game, but I think Detroit should be able to take care of business here. So I'm actually going to go with the Lions here. Um, I think they'll keep, you know, pace in the division because the Vikings are only a game behind them and... You know, I know Detroit has the tiebreaker, but Minnesota's catching up. So, you know, you, you definitely could see uh, some change there. But I think the Lions keep it going for this week. And they beat the Green Bay Packers. Sunday slate of games, guys. We got an AFC North rivalry. We got the Cleveland Browns at the Pittsburgh Steelers. As I called this on Thursday Night Football, uh... I don't know. I, I, I'm a Harry Potter guy, so I'm going to just call it Dolores Umbridge versus Bellatrix Lestrange, two of the worst characters in the Harry Potter series that I absolutely hated. Um, but, you know, la anyway, let's get into this matchup. So we look at the Steelers, man. Last week, they got a thrilling shootout win over the Cincinnati Bengals. Russell Wilson, he, looked, he threw for over 400 yards, threw three touchdowns, I believe. And Pittsburgh's offense is clicking in a way that Really, we haven't seen since Big Ben. Uh, so, Mike Tomlin clinched his 21st straight winning season. Um, and I think that's just his decision to kind of start Wilson is, you know, it's been a game changer for the team. So, you know, their defense is not as dominant as it, you know, was against, like, you know, Baltimore, let's say. I mean, they're still, I wouldn't say they're at the very top, but they're, they're, they're they can hang up there with, I mean, their defense is suspect, I would say. But, you know, the Browns, I mean... They beat the Steelers two weeks ago, but, you know, the the way they lost to Denver, I mean, Jameis Winston, he threw for 497 yards. Unfortunately, though, he threw two pick sixes, and that ended up kind of biting them, and, um, you know, that sealed their fate, I guess, a little bit in a, a very heartbreaking loss to the Broncos, where they really had it, but honestly, man, I think that Pittsburgh, with the momentum that they have, and just the more complete team play that they're showing... I think they should be able to handle Cleveland here. And honestly, I think they're pissed off about that game that they felt they gave away. I think that they're going to try to avoid a sweep. In no way do I see the Browns sweeping the Steelers this year. 
So I'm going to go Pittsburgh on this one. I hate to say it, but this team could make a deep run if they stay healthy, if you know everything works out with Russell Wilson. Because, you know, the schedule is getting tougher, but I hate to say it. This team could win a playoff game, and, you know, I'm not going to say they're an immediate Super Bowl contender yet, but, you know, they they definitely can make a run as much to my dismay. Uh, but, yeah, I'm in this one. I'm going to go Steelers. They improve to 10-3 and three and keep it going. And next up, we got the New Orleans Saints at the New York Giants. The Giants are looking for a spark. Uh, the Saints, they came off a disappointing loss to the Rams. Um, their offense basically fell apart in the second half, you know, despite a strong performance from Alvin Kamara. But when is that not the case? I mean, Derek Carr has not been making big plays for the offense. Neither team has been really impressive here, if I'm being honest with you, man. I mean, the Cow- the I believe the Giants, they lost by seven on Thanksgiving to the Dallas Cowboys. So at least they were, you know, kind of close there. But at the end of the day, man, the home field advantage is just what it comes down to when I'm uncertain. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the Giants, if I'm being honest. I really didn't think too much about it. I'm like, okay, when in doubt, go home team. But both these teams are really not very good. So I'm just going to go, do- I'm going to go, I'm going to go Giants on this one. And next up, we got another divisional game, AFC East this time. We got the New York Jets at the Miami Dolphins. So the Dolphins, you know, unfortunately, they fell to the Packers on Thanksgiving. Um, but, you know, their speed and big play has been really coming alive. You know, Tua, Tyreek, all of them. Um, the Jets are in free fall. They lost to the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, you know, he's returned to the field after last year, but he's been no good and he's just not been able to reignite the offense that they thought that they'd become, that they thought they'd be desperate to see. Um, you know, Rodgers can f- somehow find his old magic, I guess. That's the only way I see the Jets winning this matchup, and I just don't see it happening. I'm going to go Miami on this one. They're in the playoff one. They're going to try to keep it going. Um, not to keep it short, but I just think Miami is the better team here. And, um, you know, I say they bounce back from that tough loss in Green Bay. You know, the Jets, they almost beat Seattle, but, you know, at the end of the day, they just blew it. Because that's what the Jets have been, you know, doing for so many years. So it's like, I really don't know what to say about this matchup. Other than Miami's just a better team and they just have more to play for, in my opinion. And Sunday, we got another divisional game. We got the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Tennessee Titans. So the Titans got completely embarrassed by an angry commander's team. Uh, They got plagued by, they're just plagued by poor execution, turnovers, you name it. They're just, their offense has just not been able to get anything going. Um, their defense got just exposed way too early. And then you look at the Jags. I mean, they lost to the Texans, yes, but, you know, Trevor Lawrence also being out, that's a bigger deal. Mac Jones almost gave, like, a near fight at the end, but Jacksonville's defense, I will say they've been solid. But, um, I mean, I don't know. With Mac Jones, I just don't trust him to, you know, keep it going. Because I don't, I don't think Titan, Titans' defense is, like, horrific, but I think they're— I mean, they're just a struggling unit as a whole, if I'm being honest with you. I think it favors the Titans here a little bit, only because they're the home team. But otherwise, I mean, Jacksonville could take advantage. I just don't know how Mac Jones is going to fare. And because of that uncertainty, I might change my mind here. This is as of, you know, Tuesday I'm recording this. I'll go Titans here just because they're the home team. And, you know, when I'm in kind of a doubt, I'm going to pick, I'm just going to roll with the home team here, so... Give me the Titans here to get the job done over Jacksonville in a pretty low-scoring affair. Next up, we got the Atlanta Falcons at the Minnesota Vikings. So the Vikings got a thrilling comeback over the Arizona Cardinals. Sam Darnold was clutch. Justin Jefferson had a great game. Uh, they've both both these teams have kind of showed that you know they can battle through you know adversity. They can win close games. The Falcons more so earlier in the year, but. You know, the Vikings more so. I mean, they've, they're have they just keeping pace with, the you know, the Detroit Lions. And then you look at the Falcons, man. Unfortunately, recently, though, they've been spiraling. I mean, Kirk Cousins had four picks in the last game, and they lost to, uh, the Chargers. Uh, Atlanta's defense has been solid, and their offense is just selling for them, if I'm being honest. I just don't know. And I think Minnesota's just got all the momentum in the world, and I don't think they want to drop a game like this, obviously, with Detroit being a game ahead of them. You know, the D- Detroit has an opportunity to lose this week. You know, they're playing a, a division rival who's gonna who, who's chasing them in the standings. And now I know Detroit beat them earlier in the season, but you know, you never know what could happen. But in this one, I'm just gonna go with the Vikings because I, I just have a lot of confidence in them. And um, you know, we'll just see what it goes. But give me Minnesota in this one. And next up, pretty easy one here. We got the Carolina Panthers at the Philadelphia Eagles. So the Eagles are the hottest team in the league. 
They're an eight-game winning streak. I, I think they're an eight-game eight winning streak or something like that. But, you know, they've been just dominating in all fit, all facets. Saquon Barkley, he's just he almost had a career high, I believe. Uh, Philadelphia's just got a strong rushing attack, a, a elite defense, good quarterback play from Jalen Hurts, even though they don't really need him to do a whole lot. Um, I don't know. The Panthers, man, I know, you know, they, they almost beat the Saints last week, but... I don't know. Or, uh, sorry, I apologize. The Bucks last week, but I don't know. That's a divisional game. Uh, Bryce Young has been showing some promise here, but this being in Philly, I'm just going to keep it short. I got the Eagles as my lock of the week. I just don't see how they lose this game. They're trying to get that one seed. They're trying to chase, you know, Detroit and, you know, the standings. I just don't see, uh, I just don't see a way they lose this game, to be honest. No disrespect to Bryce Young. He's coming along well, but I think the Eagles are far and away the better team here. Next up, interesting one here, kind of. We got the min or the Las Vegas Raiders at the Tampa Bay Bucks. So the Bucks, I mean, they got I mean one of the most clutch teams in the league. If I'm being honest with you, uh, Baker's been playing some of his best football in late games. Bucky Irving dominated. He's I think had over 150 yards, uh, including 97 in the fourth, 97-98. Saw it near 100. But Tampa Bay's offense has seemed to be finding a lot of rhythm. Raiders have just continued to be inconsistent, and, you know, Tampa's balance attack, I know the Bucs have dropped a few gimmies here and there, but I think they're just going to be able to close out the Raiders here. Raiders are really, really struggling right now, and honestly, I think the Bucs win this one pretty handily. Um, you know, they're it's a, it's an a NFC South race, and um, I guess if you want to call it that, but because um, two of these teams absolutely stink. So I guess it's a two-team race, but... Even Atlanta is kind of spiraling right now, so I think the Bucks are just one step closer to taking this division. So, give me the Bucks here over the Las Vegas Raiders. Next up, we go to the 4 p.m. slate at games, guys. We got another divisional round match or divisional matchup. I apologize. We got the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Arizona Cardinals for the third time or second time in three weeks. So the Cardinals are desperate for a win. They got two straight losses, but they're back at home. They tend to play a lot better at home. Kyler Murray's been solid. Ro you know, he's got to be better in the red zone, in my opinion. But Seattle is also riding a three-game winning streak. Um, and, you know, honestly, this is tough because, you know, Leonard, Leonard Williams, you look at, the Seattle defense, I mean, he's been a force. But there's also been stretches where Seattle's defense goes cold. Um, and, you know, I just think the Cardinals right now, to be honest with you, I think they're a desperate, desperate, desperate football team. And I know Seattle beat them two weeks ago. But I really do, I I viewed the Cardinals as my sleeper team coming into this season. I actually kind of, I really do like the Arizona Cardinals this year. Um, and I think they have the talent to really steal this game if they clean up their mistakes. And I think just their desperation is going to pro propel them to get a win here. So in the Battle of the Birds in this division, I'm going to go with the Cardinals to win this one. Um, I'll just assume they clean up their mistakes. Kyler Murray, you know, plays a lot better in the red zone, and I just think they, you know, I don't think I don't I don't really see any of these teams sweeping each other. So I I'm going to pick the Cardinals to you know beat the Seahawks. If they had won two weeks ago, maybe Seattle steals this one. I don't know, but I don't see either team sweeping the you know each other. Uh, if they do, you got your division winner, you know, in Seattle. So, but I'm going to, I'm going to trust the Cardinals in this one. You know, I'll give them one last chance, I guess, you know, since they're a desperate football team. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go Cardinals in this one. And next up, we got the Chicago Bears at the San Francisco 49ers. So the 49ers are reeling, bro. They are, they got a blowout loss to the Bills in the snow, uh, turnovers, poor executions that doomed them from the start. Um, you know, Christian McCaffrey also, you know, the injuries has a big blow for them. The Bears, on the other hand, they've been dreadful on the road. And they're also, I think they're riding, what are they? I for, I'm trying to remember. Wait, I know they, they're they on some sort of losing streak. Um, yeah, I think they've lost, what, they've lost, was it five consecutive games? I don't remember, whatever, but, you know, they've just not been, not, not been looking too good. Um, you know, their offense has just not found any consistency. Uh, the defense just struggles to hold up against, you know, for the, for the full four quarters. 49ers depth, experience, you know, at home team here. Uh, this was actually kind of one where I had a different result at the beginning. 
I'll say just because the Bears are an inferior team, but the 49ers are busted with injuries. I'm going to go with the 49ers to get a win here. Um, you know, it's not going to be easy in my opinion, but I could see Caleb Williams doing something against this 49ers banged up defense. But I'm going to say San Francisco, another situation where they're just very desperate. So I'll lean San Francisco here kind of hesitantly. But yeah, give me the 49ers. Next up, we got the Buffalo Bills at the Los Angeles Rams. So the Bills are coming off probably their most complete game of the season. They beat the 49ers in the snow. Josh Allen had three touchdowns, including a receiving one. Jo uh, James Cook, he had over 100 y rushing yards. You know, Buffalo's offense looks like the best, like one of the top two, three offenses in the league. I mean, their defense has been stout as well. Um... And then you look at the Rams. I mean, they've showed also some resilience. Granted, their comeback win was against the New Orleans Saints. But, you know, I don't know if they have the consistency to keep up with Buffalo's firepower that they're going to present on the road. And honestly, the Rams a Rams game on the road, that could result in, like, probably 50% Buffalo fans. Because you know this fan base travels super well. Um, and they're just a hot football team right now. So I'm going to go Buffalo on this one to win. Um, you know, I... I It'll definitely not be easy, but I think that Buffalo definitely can win this game, and I think they will. I'm going to go Buffalo. Sunday Night Football. We got the Los Angeles Chargers at the Kansas City Chiefs. So the Chargers, they relied on their defense to, you know, obviously because they had four picks last week in the win against Atlanta. Their offense has just been a little inconsistent, but the defense has stepped up in some big games, big moments, and they've showed that they can they can win some games pretty ugly. And then you look at the Chiefs. They've been... I'm not going to call them fraudulent, but they've they've been scraping by opponents barely. They haven't really looked as dominant as they have, obviously, the last, like, three, four years. Uh, but Pat Mahomes is always going to give Kansas City a chance. Um, Chargers' recent surge on defense, though, it, it's a tough one because Mahomes has not been great against great defenses. And, you know, they're... I think I trust them to make some turnovers and... Um, yeah, I, I went back and forth on this one, but I'm going to take the Chargers. You know, this is my upset of the week. I'm going to take the Chargers. I think they're, you know, a desperate team. I think, you know, Buffalo wants, you know, Buffalo and Kansas City are going to be duking it out for that one seed. I'll say that Buffalo, I believe that they'll take the lead here if uh, Kansas City holds and or if this holds and they lose and if Buffalo wins. But I'm going to take the Chargers here. I think they, you know, they understand the situation that they're in. I think they could pull off a statement win here, and I think it's going to be a really uh, opp opportunistic time for the defense to do this against Mahomes. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go LA here, and uh, you know, a very good game. And you know, like I said, this can go either way. Monday night football, guys. Finally, we are at my matchup. We got the Cincinnati Bengals heading to the Big D, Dallas, Texas, to take on America's team. The Dallas Cowboys. So let's dreadfully look at my Bengals. The Bengals are in heartbreak mode. They've lost three in a row. They've scored 27 in each of the last three. Burrow, Joe Burrow has been sensational. Jamar Chase has been sensational. That Bengals offense has been sensational. But the defense, on the other hand, probably a top two, top three worst defense in the whole league. I mean, our defense has been a complete disaster, to say the least. Last week's loss of the Steelers, another gut punch. We lost 44-38. Russell Wilson threw for only over 400 yards in that game. Cincinnati's got pride, I hope. They've got talent. They've got a quarterback that's not going to quit, regardless of how slim their playoff hopes are. You know... The Cowboys are also not, not you know, they lost, obviously, Dak. So, I believe Cooper Rush is going to start in this game. And what happened two years ago when we played Cooper Rush? Everybody knows in week two. And, you know, honestly, I don't know how to feel about this going into this. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like, it's one of those situations where I'm just like, I, I'm just not going to be as emotionally involved this for the rest of the year. And yeah, it's partially because like, you know, we only got four games left or five games left. I apologize. And you know, we're, you know, very well out of the race. Um, 
I don't know, man. It's just going to be a tough one for me to really get into this year. I mean, I'll still be on here and talk, you know, Bengals, talk like, you know, NFL football picks and everything because I love doing that. I'm going to do that for the NBA. I did it for the MLB as well. It's fun. But it's not been fun being a Bengals fan this year. It's been the worst, probably the worst year in terms of heartbreak in my life. I mean, not obviously record-wise it's not, but, you know, it's just been the worst year as far as just, like, how we've lost these games. It's not about, like, what that we've lost. It's, like, how we've lost. Because a team like the Bengals, you know, they can put up all the points in the world, and then it's just, it means nothing because their defense just gives it right back. It's just deflating to see as a fan. Not much I can do, obviously, but, you know, I mean, the Cowboys have been solid. You know, they beat up on their their last two division rivals. I mean, Cooper Rush had a great game against Washington. He was pedestrian, I'd say, in the, in the Giants game. But, you know, he looked solid. Uh, but... Honestly, this feels like a last, uh, I don't even want to call it the last one. I feel like I've been calling it the last one for like the last like two weeks. But it feels like the last stand, if I'm being honest with you, for Joe Burrow and company. I'm going to just trust, you know, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase. They stay, you know, upright. They step up in this one. And I think the Bengals, you know, they head into Dallas. It's going to be, I guess, an emotional game for both these teams. Cowboys being at home, but Bengals, you know, just trying to keep their slim, 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 slim playoff hopes alive, but also just get a win for some moral, you know, I guess morale boost. And yeah, I'm just going to say that I'm just going to, I'm just going to assume that we pull it off. I'm going to give us the win here. Um, Not going to be too emotionally invested in the game because if we lose, it's like, okay, well, we're four and eight. What's four and nine? You know, it's like, it's just deflating. And I'm, this team has kind of just broken me. I'm, I'm being honest with you, you know, I just haven't been in a place to get excited about this team. Um, I had a lot of high hopes. You know, it, apparently it was my mistake. But, you know, the Bengals, I think they'll find a way to win here against the Dallas Cowboys. That, you know, last three weeks have been tough, you know, against three, you know, Super Bowl caliber. I guess not caliber, but three playoff, you know, contenders, playoff teams. But, man, it's just it's just been a brutal week. And the Cowboys are, I guess, the easiest test out of the four. But, yeah, I'll go Cincinnati on this one. Um purely out of faith. And that's going to do it, guys. Thank you guys for clicking on this video. Um, I'll have more in my Bengals versus Cowboys preview for week 14. Wow. The season has kind of flown by, if I'm being honest with you, man. But, you know, it just feels like, it, it feels like, I, I mean, I'm glad it's flown by just because of how the Bengals have kind of turned out. But, you know, it's always one of those things where, like, usually if your team is good, the season flies by. But even when the Bengals are bad, it feels like it's flying by. But, you know, I guess it is what it is, you know. Making these probably help. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate you guys tuning in. And um, I'll see you in week 15 for these same picks. But you guys have a great one. Hopefully another great week. And hopefully a Bengals dub. Please!